Hello friends and welcome. We're going to try to take a comprehensive look at what we have been studying in the stars for the past few months. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump in right into the Revelation 12 sign. And we have our trusty friend Solarium-Web.org right here. And we're going to set some of our filters and jump into it setting our timetable back to 2017 feast of trumpets and we're going to do a search for the sun because just as it says over here in revelation 1 16 and he had in his right hand seven stars not of his mouth when a two-edged uh, sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength now just because of our last video i'm half tempted to look up that word sword in the stars but i will refrain for time's sake so looking at the revelation 12 sign let's go ahead and pull up revelation 12 uh, and then up here i've got the timeline that we have been looking at for a while now starting with verse one and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pained to be delivered the woman here is Virgo, we've got her clothed with the sun, the moon at her feet, a crown of 12 stars, nine of them being the constellation Leo, and then the three planets, Venus, Mars, and Mercury. She is pained to be delivered with child. That is Jupiter. Jupiter went retrograde for nine months, just means that it appeared to be going backwards, forwards to exit the womb area. Uh, and actually, nine months before Feast of Trumpets 2017, we had what was known as the Conception Comet. And we looked at a paper, I believe it was by Luis Vega, that we kind of looked at. Uh, if you would like further reference, I'll probably have that linked below. Continuing on, just as a side note, let me open a new screen i just wanted to let everyone know that there is actually a fake revelation 12 sign happening right now and i will show you what i mean by that if we go to let's say where was it second thessalonians second thessalonians 2 uh, I want to find it in the Greek. And we're going to look at the man of lawlessness or the man of perdition. Let me just find lawlessness. 458. And as you know, if you've seen our videos before, if we look up 458 in the NASA small body database look up again this is for today we are going to see uh this today is december the 20th 2021 this asteroid that represents look at that lawlessness the number for lawlessness in the same spot we don't have the the sun over here or the moon per se or really any other planets uh I don't know if dragon era, I mean, we've looked at the dragon. Uh, there were a ton, just a ton of, oh, look at that, dragon era, uh, which is also in the Revelation 12 sign. We looked at that in another video <laughs> that was kind of funny because the dragon was right there as Jupiter was being birthed. But we also saw between the dragon and jupiter the white horseman uh 
Justicia, one of our two witnesses. And then we saw how Dragonera was just pelted on by all of these other uh, planets and asteroids uh, before reaching <laughs> Jupiter, the representation of the Christ child. That was a good video. I'll try to get that linked below. Let me make note of it. Dragonera. Okay. Continuing on. I'm already digressing. Okay. So with the Revelation 12 sign, we're going to go ahead and try to match up what we see up here in our timeline with what we see in the heavens. Uh, and not everything is in this top portion. We do have the bottom portion with the two witnesses. Uh, for instance, uh, going into conjunction with the sun, just as we saw with Revelation 116, that either these two asteroids, which we have a video on, uh, why they are the two witnesses. They were either going in retrograde or in conjunction with the sun with a lot of really important dates. Uh, retro, excuse me, in conjunction with the sun, uh, with Passover of 2020. And we talked about how that was part of the abomination that caused desolation when the churches closed. Uh, so that was interesting just now to realize that that was part of that uh, conjunction that we just saw in our previous video. These, I mean, these two witnesses, they are real. They are witnessing these things. Justicia went into conjunction with the sun uh, later in July 2020 when the church is opened. And then Pompeia, the second uh, witness, he, uh, went into conjunction. I, I say he and she, but because um, they say that the witnesses are man and woman. So just Justicia being a female and Pompeia being the bigger and, and slower asteroid. I'm not trying to make any assumptions here, um, but that's kind of how they work together. Uh, Pompeia was in conjunction in the fall, excuse me, in Leo during the fall of Af Afghanistan in August of this past year. And then Justicia was witnessing uh, the second horseman uh, and the first rapture in Aquila with you know the sun so all of these things are taking place and we we look to see you know things in the future as well but gonna try to stick to this timeline today so again we've got the the revelation 12 sign from which we are going to start so we're going to follow our first horseman the white horseman the king planet jupiter and as we've said in previous videos, uh, Jupiter actually has a number of moons. Uh, each of these planets are one of the seals. There are seven planets. There are seven seals. Uh, the eighth planet, Pluto, being part of the fourth horseman, Death and Hades. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. It's it's incredible just how accurate these things are. Jupiter um, was a very lusty god. Uh, the Greek name was Zeus for this same god, the Roman name Jupiter. Uh, all of these moons that Jupiter has um, are named after his, most of them, his lovers. I think one is named after his mom, male and female. I mean, Jupiter just took whatever he wanted. Christ came and, you know, just like with the gods of Egypt, he is redeeming, restoring, dominating the fallen earth. And part of that is the way that we see religion, the way that we see spirituality, the way that we see God. We're going to see righteous fulfillments of these planets instead of the pagan stories that are associated with them. How each of these planets got their names, I mean, I don't know the rationale, but we see how they are playing out into these and times. Um, so let's go ahead and, and get started. Looking at Jupiter, we're going to see Jupiter being called by the first living creature with the face of an eagle, Aquila. And for those of you who have not seen our previous videos, uh, this is Revelation 4, and this is how we know what each of these different uh, constellations are. The four Living creatures are covered with eyes in front and behind, and they have the four different faces that you see here. Lion, ox, man, and eagle. The 24 elders representing the 24 earthly time segments by which we view our planets. Sea of crystal sparkling glass representing space. The emerald rainbow, the aurora borealis, and the throne 
is set in heaven. Okay, so following Jupiter, and this is going to kind of jump around. Let me try to get this recentered and see if Stellarium is going to cooperate with us today. All right, so we've got Jupiter here. Dragonera is in the vicinity too, and these uh, planets are just going to go bombarding. And this is the war in heaven, you know, exemplified. We also have 96P Macholtz. That's going to come in later with the fourth and, excuse me, the fifth trumpet specifically uh, as we look at the second rapture uh, revelation 14 talks about three rapture calls and we're going to go over all three of them all the way down through the judgments and armageddon so hold on to your hats it's just very incredible i mean all these different planets and asteroids were part of that revelation 12 sign right after revelation 12 uh jupiter goes retrograde into Libra. Jupiter, as you can see, is a slow moving planet. And I think it takes about 12 years for it to 12 Earth years for it to orbit the sun. Now we're going to watch Jupiter as it makes its way toward, oh, as you can see, Sagittarius, but goes retrograde in Ophicus right above Scorpio. Okay, so Coming into November 2019, we see right up here, we've got Aquila, the living creature with the face of an eagle. It's uh, Jupiter is going to go right under those wings. Let me center this again. It's going to be right under those wings. I can make this a little bigger of Aquila. So we see match, a match right here. We've got the, you know, the living creature with the face of an eagle. We've got Jupiter coming into this area. And this is the same time that the sun, I'll go ahead and highlight the sun, is about to go into conjunction with Jupiter. So Jupiter, again, under the wings of Aquila in November, things started happening in November with the worldwide pandemic. And just as Jupiter goes into conjunction with the sun is when all of this happens or is unleashed. Now it wasn't, you know, a one and done. It was a bam in your face. It was you know, kind of, kind of still and in, in a small voice, but it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And here we see, uh, let's pull up Revelation 6 and we'll take a look at, just so you can look at it at home. If you want to, we will look at or have you um, have the ability to look at what, what each of these living creatures has. Um, and what their judgments are. Whoops. One moment. All right. So we've got white horse, bow, and crown. Here in Stellarium, we have the horseman with a bow and a crown. Jupiter under the living creature with the face of an eagle aquila going into conjunction with the sun. The date is the end of December 2000. 19. There's a match there. Moon representing sorrow. When you see the moon, um, I associate it with the Holy Spirit, uh, the Son with God the Father. Uh, continuing on, let's get our timeline up here. So check, we've got the second one here. Next, we're going to take a look at Mars, our red horseman, the second horseman entering Taurus. And if we were to look at that with Revelation 6, the second beast, we've got a dagger or a great sword. It's, the da it's a dagger in the Greek. When we look at the constellation with a dagger, well, let's, let's get called out by Mar uh, Taurus first before we get ahead of ourselves. 
So here comes Mars. And we're going to follow Mars. And actually, we have a year. So I'm not going to follow Mars for a year. Let's actually let's go to Jupiter. We're going to remember at end of 2020, all that talk about the conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn. We're going to watch these two interact a little bit. Um, coming out as Sagittarius and then going into retrograde. Both of them going into retrograde at the same time just means that they look like they're going backwards. It's an optical illusion. It has more to do with Earth's angle than either of those. Okay, so we've got that conjunction, December 2020, and here comes the sun. And, and I'm not saying that I am getting every single one of these signs in the heavens. I'm sure that there are things that people are witnessing right now that are just flying by me right now. But uh, there's Mercury. Mercury goes very close to the sun. It is constantly going in conjunction every month and a half or so. All right. So we are around the Passover time frame for 2021. And a lot of things happening. One of the things that we talked about uh, with our two witnesses, actually this one was in 2020. Uh, Pompeo was in conjunction with the sun, Passover 2020. I mean, there, we're, we're already past that. I'm just pointing it out after the fact. Um, okay, and then we're gonna look for July 2020. <sighs> actually past that again this is fast moving so let's go ahead and, and hit what we can uh, and keeping this video within a certain time frame so Passover 2021 we talked about today uh, we had a couple of asteroids that we were looking at and actually I am gonna do it I'm gonna go back to 2020 and let's go ahead and verify the dates of Passover for 2020 I'm looking at early April, April 8th. So the asteroids that we were looking at were Slade and Iso, Iso guy. Okay, and if you watched our previous video, you know that one represents abomination and the other desolation. Those are the numbers for them in the Greek. And I don't have that pulled up right now, but you can see that in our previous video. That was really wild. Just confirming that, yes, this is when the um, abomination that causes desolation, which is upon us here in December 2021, it will be soon. Um, for those two to be in Sagittarius, the constellation that called out the, or underneath Aquila, which called out the first horseman uh, with the bow, like Sagittarius has the bow and the crown, which Sagittarius also has a crown right next to it. So that was pretty incredible. Now, if we go back over here, um, we saw that the churches were closed for Passover 2020. So let's Let's see, where was Pompeia at this time? Boom. So in conjunction with the sun and in, oh, Pisces. Hello, okay, the church is closed over Passover 2020 and we have our witness here witnessing it. Okay, these things are happening in the sky. Uh, and then looks like July 20, 20, we'll just jump over here, Justitia played an important role. Well, let's take a look at Justitia when the church is reopened. Oh, I'm so surprised. Okay, so right here, oh, Neo Wise, New Wisdom, I think that that was an Antichrist comment. So it doesn't surprise me that it's in, you know, hanging out here when all these other important signs 
are happening. I could be wrong. I need to do some more research. I mean, but anyway, Justicia are one of our two witnesses there witnessing the churches reopen. Uh, comma Enki, we've talked about that one before that there was a paper written about how that comet could have been uh, the angel that was attacking Jerusalem after King David took the census and, you know, God's wrath and judgment came upon the city. I mean, there's just so much going on, friends, in the heavens. And I'm so thankful to be able to look at these things with you. All right. Carrying on. And I hope you all post your questions. If you don't have any questions, great. I'm doing a good job. But I'm sure that there are questions out there. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump over to 2021 Passover. All right, so this is going to be Mars. And Mars 2021. Let's just go by month here. As we are entering. Oh, look at that. Taurus. <clears throat> so Passover 2021. We just... Looked at 2020, Passover 2021, end of March, early April. So, end of March, early April. I mean, we're in Taurus. The living creature with the face of an ox. Boom. Criteria met right there. Next, we want to look at La Palma. Yes, there is an asteroid named La Palma. Where is that? It's right here, right in Taurus. So what happens? Let's have a look. When La Palma started doing its little erupting, oh, look at that. The sun is in conjunction with the asteroid La Palma. Okay, and I shouldn't say little erupting, I should say. Started to go into that mode. There was a conjunction with the sun. All right, second seal, okay. Mars was called out in Passover or during Passover with Taurus. Now Mars hasn't gone in conjunction with the sun yet, but it will. Okay, and we're also going to see Comet Soho. So I'm going to actually highlight Mars here and we're going to zoom in a little bit more. All right, entering Virgo along with the moon, representing sorrow. So Soho, here he comes. Soho has a very interesting path. Uh, let me see which one I should, probably this guy live. No, maybe space reference. There we go. Let's go ahead and pull up Soho, just so you all at home can see. 342P Soho has this really sharp orbit. Um, if you look at the previous screen, I mean, most orbits are very fluid. They're not really jagged. If we go to the skylive.com, you'll really be able to see, I mean, just very smooth all of these different comets asteroids they just have very you know loose if you will linear paths but not soho soho has this tight curve it's just in and out looks like a catching away okay so let's take a look and it's going to get really close around Spica. Um, and I'm not sure how close I could zoom in here, but let's get a little closer. All right, so Soho comes in like, I mean, so fast. But there's so much happening. Okay, so we saw Amphrotiti. If we look in the Greek, Amphrotiti is a water entity. Okay, so La Palma, wife of Poseidon. Hmm, wonder if that has any significance. Well, 
<sighs> and then we also saw, I don't know if it's going to manifest here. I'm going to look. Okay, so I actually was not able to find 22 Peacock with Stellarium at this moment. So I had to go to the skylive.com just to let you know where this comment was when we were watching Comet Soho over here as it approached the sun. Uh, it's not presenting itself at the moment, but thank God we can look over here. So as you can see, we were close to the sun with this comet. Now, the reason that it's significant is because the, the number 22 means single in the Greek uh, in Strong's Concordance. So that was a little disappointing to see that right before, you know, that conjunction, but it just confirmed that God was showing us, hey, you're on the right track. We went from a single number for this comet to uh, the, uh, the number that means marriage, which was signified by Magnolia, the asteroid, and boom, right there. It was right there. We went from single to being married. I mean, it was, it was really incredible. So uh, let's let that play out. Soho goes in and out. We've got Magnolia. And then we did a little digging and found that it's actually asteroid Vesta. There's actually two asteroids over here, Vesta and Juno that mean marriage. So, I mean, and just to put this into a little bit of perspective, this is what our, our solar system looks like. We've got this major asteroid belt, which is like the, the result of two collided planets uh, th that, you know, occurred one of the times that this binary star decided to float by. Uh, there are some that say that Mars was dropped off by that binary system and a couple, you know, one of the moons was taken and another left. So lots of things have happened that we really don't understand, that we don't know anything about. Um, but we're learning. We're learning. So continuing on, uh, we went um, following planet Soho as well as Mars. Uh, Mars, that's going to be, oh, right there. So it, all of these things were happening at the same time. Again, this is October 2021 Mars in conjunction with the sun and this is the time frame that we were expecting you know China made that announcement that they were going to invade Taiwan at the end of September and I called you know September 25th for that Mars sun conjunction now I do tend to call a little early and I don't I'm not ashamed of that at all um I'd rather give people warning so now, you know, that's been moved back apparently, but all of these things seem to be confirming each other. Again, Mars in conjunction with the constellation with a dagger, boots or Buddhist. I mean, the timing is perfect. Again, it, it's just, it always is. It's God. This is his way, uh, as long as we know how to read it. So uh, also in the mix here, as we saw from, our timeline up here with the two witnesses, Justitia, was in conjunction with the sun with the second horseman. Let's go ahead and pull Justitia up. There we go. Boom, right there. I mean, we can't, we can't make this any, you know, we can't improve on this at all. So let's see what we're looking at now. The third seal okay mercury was called out by the constellation with the face of a lion we've got leo over here that was we're going to back up a little bit again end of july beginning of august right in here we've got the moon i'm not surprised god is orchestrating these things lord please bless this 
Uh, and then Mercury kind of outruns the sun and then goes into conjunction in October. But that's not in the scales of Libra. That's in Virgo. We've got to wait until we're actually in the scales as we see from Revelation 6. Looking at the third seal, the black planet Mercury. And for those of you who are new, we've got our black planet Mercury here. This is just kind of a synopsis of what we're going over here if you'd like to pause. All right. So what does this look like in Stellarium? Again, we've got Soho. Soho's going to be in the picture, uh, kind of parking under Aquila, the constellation with the eagle's face. And we see in Revelation 12, when the woman is taken up with the two wings of the great eagle. It's the same living creature. So following Mercury, right here, let's go ahead and get Mercury centered. Looking for, and this is going to be quick, uh, Mercury heading into the scales with the sun. There it goes, dive bombs. And that was towards the end of September, or De November, with, oh, the stock market just happened to take a hard hit that day. Uh, the stock market just happened to take a hard hit, you know, a couple of months prior with the housing market in China. We saw, you know, the after effects today as well. That stock market, at least when I saw it, was 600 below. It has since recovered. But these things are happening now. They're happening now, today, as they're supposed to, as it says in the heavens. And God is forewarning us. As I remember Brent, uh, Brenda Weltner saying in one of her videos, forewarned means forearmed. Okay, so we've looked at Mercury, the third seal. Rapture, that's what we're looking at, and we've had so many signs of confirmation. Um, we talked about the two asteroids that mean marriage. The one was Vesta, the virgin goddess of home and hearth. The other is Juno, Zeus's wife, or Jupiter's wife. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Also under the wings of Aquila. Uh, let's... Uh, we talked about uh, the comet, the comet, let me go ahead and pull that up. For that, we're going to go back to the sky live and we're going to look under comets and we're going to do a search for Aquila. There we go. And there is one. Uh, and this is the one when we looked it up with this, uh, the NASA database, the JPL database. We found that comet C2021E3. Had a, an association of 3774. And when we looked that up, Strong's 3774, it gave us Carathai, the Carathites that were the foreign body of King David as King David was trying to escape from his son, an Absol uh, Antichrist sort of figure, Absalom. Uh, it also, 3774, references a Hebrew mighty man, and that was Uriah. I believe he was one of the 30 uh, mighty men that David had. There were more than 30 because obviously some died. Uh, but we've got, you know, the Gentiles represented, the Hebrews represented. They are in the constellation of Aquila right now, the constellation with the wings of the great eagle i mean they're right here in this tail section it's really incredible how all of these are just fitting dovetailing if you will 
right together. Uh, and then over here, uh, we also had an asteroid Garibaldi. And thank you so much to the viewer who mentioned that this asteroid um, was named after a, a general, a famous general. Well, this number that's also associated uh, as we were looking for the Archangel Michael, Garibaldi is 4317. Let's see, that's the one that I remember. Let's see 3413. So opening 3413. What was it? I've forgotten. Yeah, 3413 in our small body database. 3413. Oh, wrong one. I'm gonna look that one up. 3413. Because everything happens for a reason. Andriana. Oh, and oh, this is okay. And this is one that I meant to mention. Well, that was the wrong thing. Okay, let's try that again. Sometimes it goes to the wrong thing. Even though I click on the one, look, at, it's taken me to this satellite. Golly. Um, but I believe that <laughs> that it, it is still in that same vicinity with Aquila. I don't know why it's trying to take me to an artificial satellite. However, this does remind me that one of the asteroids I was looking up was in this boat here in the southern hemisphere. Um, and I think it was in, in relation to the research I was doing on the tsunami. So I mean, even on accident, um, these things are just manifesting themselves. All right, so this is what we are looking for with the rapture, this, the sun under Aquila, Soho under Aquila. Let's back it up um, and see where Soho is. Okay, we take Soho up forward a couple months. Right there. Uh, and then we are also looking at <clears throat> asteroid Juno, you know, just meaning marriage. She's also in the shield of Scutum, being what protected. We've got our, our you know, our archangels here, to, ready to take us up in the rapture. We've got uh, Michael here, with just like the General Garibaldi. Uh, Andriana is somewhere in here because I've done a video on it. I know. Um, right in here the war with michael the war in the heavens all right so uh comment leonard i might need to make this a little bigger uh let's back it up a couple months and watch how this plays out comment leonard is gonna come from this area with ursa major feet of the bear body of a lion or a leopard or lynx and the mouth of little baby Leo Minor. Not Leo Major, Leo Minor is where this comet's gonna come from. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we'll back it up. And again, I, I just can't search for these things in the desktop version of Stellarium. <clears throat> So yeah, Comet Leonard, I mean, it was hanging out there for a while. This isn't just some fluke of a coincidence. No, this is where Comet Leonard comes from. If we jump forward to today, and let's get situated with the sun. All right, so just past the ecliptic line and going into microscopium signifying perhaps the biological war that we are seeing right now. All right. Next, after the Antichrist, oh yes, Crater. Crater is the cup of God's wrath. Let's go ahead and bring that guy up here. 
And it was noted that in the series, IPG2, I should just say animated movie. Um, let's pull it up. All right, friends. So this is highly interesting to me. Okay. So we have done searches for IPG2 before. I don't say that official name because I feel that it is like pronouncing a curse. But the last, you know, times that we've been searching for it, the thumbnail that we're looking for with the sun between Scorpio and Aquila has been here. They've changed the thumbnail. This looks like after calamity, perhaps after a tsunami. These may be waves over here. Um, so I'm surprised at that, but I'm going to get it queued up in just a second. Okay, so we've got it pulled up here. Uh, Antichrist figure is being birthed. We have the CERN. Uh, I'll, I'll just back that up just a little bit so y'all can see. There we go. So this, when we do a search on CERN, Shiva, because that's the little icon or avatar there, uh, or CERN Shiva dance. Uh, let's look at images. So this is outside of CERN um, in Switzerland. One of the establishments for CERN. And so that is what this, this little blue guy was representing. Uh, corporate America is about to fall. Stock markets at the hands of the Antichrist is getting ready to come out. Not quite out yet. Media after brainwashing people is hiding and now their military, um, the militarized people are coming out. The Islamic Mahdi is rising, their Messiah. Another, now we've got the dragon and waves. Okay. And we saw um, the dragon. That's with another comment. We'll go over that in a little bit. Okay, the feet of the bear, no surprise. And then lastly, we're going to have crow, uh, the crow, Corvus. Okay, so I actually had to pause and think because I don't have Corvus the crow. I've got Crater, the cup of God's wrath. And I almost changed it, but I thought, no, I don't put my documentation up here based off of things from the enemy. That's not, not the kind of watchman I am. I don't watch the enemy. Typically, um, there are those that do that. I think that's a slippery slope, but kudos to those who can do that and, you know, still stay on the straight and narrow. Um, but we will go over uh, crater in a moment, but it's interesting. These are right next to each other. It's probably a reference that I found in uh, Revelation, perhaps 16 or 17 or Definitely 14. But anyways, this is the Cup of God's Wrath, and it is associated with Leonard. So let's go ahead. Again, this is October 2021, and we're just going to watch Leonard turn into or turn from a comment that just kind of, you know, lingers on to boom right over Corvus. And it's it's off like a bat out of heck crosses the ecliptic line just within the last few days and again it's it's just going to cruise right over here into microscopium and basically slows down again hangs out on in the crane uh, southern fish area i'm not sure what that means if anything yet but we're going to keep studying i'm uh, going to jump back to today and let's take a look at the next step in our timeline saturn Okay, let's get Saturn centered here. And we were looking for a major event to happen with the fourth horseman. And I'll pop that back up for you all. The fourth horseman, we've got uh, Death and Hades. Hades being Pluto and with uh, Death being followed, 
closely by Hades. Um, Pluto and Saturn aren't next to each other very often. Um, it may take Saturn maybe 28 years and Pluto 248 years to do one, you know, trip around the sun. So for these two to be close to each other, that was really um, telling. And then there was also another asteroid. Let me see if I can remember. I think it was like Serbius. One moment. Cerberus, that is the Hounds of Heaven asteroid. It's really scary. Not Hounds of Heaven, Hounds of Hell. Excuse me. The multi-headed dog that guards the underworld. It just happens to be in the mix here uh, where we have Saturn and Pluto heading into Aquarius. <clears throat> and right here, Saturn. Over here, Pluto is right next to Venus. And that's a little disconcerting. So, yeah, as Saturn is getting called into the constellation uh, of the living creature with the face of a man, we've got Pluto right next to Venus, Cerberus in the mix over here, uh, and we expected that there would be some sort of event and tornadoes just ripped through the heartland of the United States, killing, you know, a lot. Um, let me see if I can find the death toll. Uh, Kentucky, or let's just say tornado death toll. Because it went across several states, 76 just in Kentucky. <clears throat> I think there still are um, many th that are still missing. So maybe not the largest catastrophe, but you know, what do we need for a warning? Uh, this seal, uh, Saturn is going to go into conjunction with the sun in February. So just like with the other seals, uh, with COVID or with, uh, Jupiter and the first seal going into or under Aquaria, Aquila in Sagittarius, um, we had the, the initial outbreak and then the, with the calling out and then the world, you know, became aware when it went into conjunction with the sun, when it was powered up. And then uh, we have, you know, Mars being called out by Taurus over Passover with the skirmish between the Israel, the Israelis and the Palestinians. Uh, maybe it wasn't a major world war, but it was enough. Uh, and then coming into conjunction later on with the sun um, in October, September, that time frame. Uh, with the threat of war, yes, and definitely wars in the heavens. And wars in the heavens were happening at that time, Passover um, of this year as well. We had that weird Texas storm and the snow and Tennessee with, I think they had floods and power outages. So there was definitely a lot of, of things going on. Uh, the word for uh, in Revelation 12 with Michael and the war in the heavens can also mean the skies and the atmosphere. And we've done a video on that <clears throat> just by studying the Greek. So um, Saturn in Aquarius, the sun. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that. And then, well, actually prior to that, the sun's going to hit Venus right over here. And that is what I am looking at to be the martyr planet. Uh, God gave me a word. Uh, I was just waking up one morning and I just felt, you know, January 7th. I didn't have a year. I didn't know what it meant. I thought, okay, January 7th. That's odd. And then within a, you know, a few days later, I realized what happens January 7th and it just made me crumble. Um, be safe. You know, when uh, I, to one of the churches, God says, or Jesus says, I will give you the morning star. What I believe he's saying, at least one interpretation is that he is giving them a warning. When you see that morning star getting close to the sun, getting close to the horizon, get out of the city, flee. And that's exactly what's happening here. This 
planet Venus is getting closer and closer to the sun, you get away, you get to safety because God's trying to warn you. Okay, next we will see the sun going into conjunction. Actually, I just looked at my notes and I don't think I finished my thought um, over here with the second horseman. We looked at Corvus and Leonard. Let's go ahead and finish that up. And then we'll talk about Saturn. So mask is off. We've got some sort of earthquake, perhaps. Uh, and out comes the Antichrist. And you're going to see this little crown disappear. The church will collapse. The church that's by and large, funded by government grants or the Antichrist system. Antichrist doesn't need that system anymore. And they're going to do things on their own. And then as soon as the view turns around, we're going to see the sun. It's going to be between, you see, Scorpio's tail here and the wings of the great eagle Aquila here. We have a tsunami, we have meteors coming in, um, and the Antichrist just kind of waiting in the wings of all that, just like we would see in Revelation 13. And I actually have that pulled up over here. And this is the verse that I was referencing when I was speaking of the beast uh, was like unto a leopard or lynx, uh, feet of a bear, mouth of a lion. We're going to talk about the dragon in a little bit. Uh, and as we see uh, over here, it's the dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Uh, we're going to see that in the heavens as well. Now with this channel, we always want to be biblical. I always want to get that scripture right in front of you. Um, Revelation 12 is obviously a very important chapter and it's, it's crucial in getting this right. Uh, we see verse seven, you know, Michael and his angels fighting with the dragon, um, the dragon being cast to the earth. Some channels and i mean i know that we've all learned it most of us in the church that the church isn't going to go through any sort of tribulation at the same time we see in verse 13 and when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child now if we look at i didn't mean to do that if we look at Revelation 12 in the Greek, and we look for, I don't know if it's going to have, I think it's going to have pursued. Yeah, pursued. It doesn't say persecuted. It pursued the woman. Now, when we clicked on this, we saw that it it, mean, it could mean to put to flight, to pursue. And then we looked a little more into it. And I, I believe that we lo actually looked in the Hebrew because what we found was Absalom pursuing his father. David and his household never caught him. He just pursued them. Uh, Sennacherib, we looked at that with our last video. And he, being an Antichrist figure, he's, uh, Sennacherib was the king of Assyria. Let me get that pulled up. So Isaiah chapter 37, uh, we looked at recently, and it has Hezekiah and Sennacherib, the king of Assyria. Now Hezekiah was rebelling against the king of Assyria, didn't want to pay tribute to him anymore. Uh, Nineveh, we remember, was the capital of this country, uh, the same place that Jonah went to. He didn't want to. He didn't like these people. He knew what they'd done. Uh, but God's, in spite of the wickedness, 
warned these people through Jonah of the coming disaster, very similar to what we are going to experience. The difference, the king of Egypt didn't listen to the warnings from Moses, but the king of Assyria did show wisdom and the people did as well. And they repented all of them. Uh, they mourned and grieved and repented. They, you know, prayed, walked around in sackcloth. Uh, so before the times of I'm not sure if this is before or after. I have to look at that. But we've got Hezekiah having this confrontation with Sennacherib, king of Assyria. Um, and this figure is taunting Hezekiah. Now, I'm not going to go through it. We went through it uh, a couple videos ago. But the interesting thing is uh, that Sennacherib is taunting Hezekiah saying it was your God that sent me. You know, in a previous verse, he's saying, you know, are you trying to trust in Egypt? And God has shown me that Egypt represents Nar, the new apostolic reformation. So it's actually here in 36 where uh, Sennacherib or his field commander is calling Hezekiah out for trusting in Egypt. And then we see later on him taunting, saying that um, that it's because of their sins of adultery, excuse me, idolatry, that they are um, facing this judgment and that the Lord has sent Sennacherib's troops to attack Israel and Hezekiah. We see that here in, in verse 10. And am I now come up without the Lord against this land to destroy it? The Lord said unto me, go up against this land and destroy it. And I think that this story is a prime example of how people get confused in terms of is the white horseman that is conquering and to conquer Jesus or the Antichrist? Because it's you know, the Antichrist spirit that is breathing all these threats, but God is still in control. God is the one with the the bow that we see with the white horseman. We know this because of Lamentations 3. And this is the verse that God gave to me when, you know, everybody was talking about the bow. All, all, what does the bow mean? Does, is it a needle? And I just prayed and I asked God and he showed me that, it is his wrath. That's what that means. It has, I'm sure, different meanings. But when we look at, you know, who's in charge of that bow, it's God. God is in charge. So although I can see why people would, would think it was the enemy carrying out these plans, God is the one in control. And he's our gracious father. We pray to him and a lot of these judgments, I believe, they are less than what they could have been. Most definitely. And I'll go ahead and scroll through. This is a long chapter, but just to give anybody further context if they need it. So jumping over here again to the word for flight, to pursue, when we look that up with Strong's, excuse me, we were just in Strong's, with the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, we get this asteroid here, Rober Boxa. Uh, and if we get this over here in Stellarium, we see that it is right in the mix here. So the concept of being pursued is here right under the wings of Aquila. Doesn't mean that we're going to be captured. David, you know, escaped. Hezekiah stood up to Sennacherib and his army and was victorious. There, you know, Sennacherib was attacked via another front and had to withdraw. And he said, you know, don't think that you can put your faith in God now. I'll be back. And he wasn't. He wasn't an issue ever again. All right, so we've talked about, okay, we were going to talk about Saturn 
And all this just to say there are so many signs going on in the heaven. It's just impossible to know and understand them all. Um, so we talked about Venus. Uh, going into February, Saturn will go in conjunction with the sun. We'll look at that. We'll zoom out a little bit just to confirm our timeline. Boom, just like that. Early February, and we are looking for a very strong event to happen at this at, at this time. Now, before I go any further, we do have what is known as a zombie comet afoot. And I know that there have been a lot of prophecies. There's been a lot of media about zombies. Okay, so right here, TB1. 45 this dead comet they call it a, a zombie comet or dead comet just because it doesn't have any fire in it it's, it's not making a lot of um, visual effects so that we can you know see it um, it's just kind of dead so when we put TB 145 this time we're going to go over to star walk we see that this zombie comet at the same time, let me bring this down, the same time that the martyrs are going through um, the conjunction with the sun with Venus, this, excuse me, this is um, also going in conjunction, the sun, this zombie comet, um, all at the same time and this is early january now this could be um the way that the powers that be can distinguish between those who have taken the vaccine and those who need to be martyred i don't know i just thought that that was something that was worth mentioning and and including here and again our timeline early february for a saturn to go in conjunction with the sun somewhere in, in that area. Next. All right, next, since we've already looked at Venus and the fifth seal, we're gonna look at the sixth seal and that's gonna be Neptune and Pisces, the church, uh, Saturn being Aquarius, Venus going into conjunction with the sun in Sagittarius with the bow, uh, just as we've been talking about going to highlight Neptune here and take a little spin. Okay, so the sun going in to conjunction with Neptune. Uh, Jupiter is right there. That, again, that could have some significance. Um, if you have any ideas, please do comment. So we're, we're saying mid-March. I don't, you know, give specific dates, obviously. Um, and, but maybe I should say mid-March, end of March, you know, maybe. Um, I only have so much space. Uh, so that's what we're looking at, and that is the sixth seal. That's going to be a hard day. That's going to be a hard day. Uh, the sun is going to turn black, but it's not the, rev uh, not the Matthew 24 rapture that we are thinking about. We did a video on this. Uh, let's recap real quick. It's actually up here in our spreadsheet. Comparison between terms for the sun and moon from Matthew 24 with the verbiage used in Revelation. Matthew 24, we have the Greek 4654, scotizo. Uh, Revelation 9 with the fifth trumpet has a very similar word to darken. They are both verbs. With Revelation 6, and the sixth seal, we've got for dark malice, or actually black, not even the word dark, black as sackcloth. And these are not verbs. One's an adjective. The other is a noun. Now, we're going to go into the significance of the, the verb usage, the verb usage here, um, as we get into that seal. Uh, next, we're going to look at the trumpets 
over here. Oh, actually, it's going to be the false prophet. Let me move this so you, you can see a little better. Going to highlight the sun here. There's going to be a comet that comes out. And we're going to continue with the sun um, because there's a couple of... It's going to diverge, and, and let me get this straight in my head for just a second. Okay, so now I, I remember. So we've got the sun highlighted. Let's go ahead and go into full screen mode. We're going to see, um, as we've got listed here, C202103, and that is the comet that goes by Aries, has the um, appearance of the lamb, but goes into Draco, has the voice of a lion following the sun there it is and so this comet is not going into Aries it is going near Aries it is like a lamb but it speaks as Draco the dragon over here oh goodness don't do that okay so here it goes boom like a moth to a flame and there's the sun over there all right so let's back it up we're in june now let's back it up here for our seventh seal by going into the end of April heading into May. What we're going to see is a conjunction here with Uranus. So let me go ahead and highlight Uranus. There it is. So we're going to hit that area for the seventh seal or the first four trumpets may early may of 2022 okay easy oh okay i'm sorry with the seventh seal it opens with lightning and an earthquake so let's jump over to revelation 8 just to make that distinguishment all right so we are here in revelation 8 gonna jump down to we're talking about the altar so when we look at verse 5 actually let's take it up to verse 1 we see that the seventh seal has been opened okay it's not a trumpet yet it leads into the trumpets and there is you know the description of the altar being given which reminds me I, I need to show one other thing that I forgot with the fifth seal because it talks about the saints or the martyrs crying out from under the altar we're gonna see that in a second but with verse 5 the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake okay that is when Uranus goes into conjunction with the sun. Uranus being the former god of the universe um, or an air god, air being maybe representative of technology. Um, with Neptune, that would be a water judgment, uh, perhaps the tsunami overtaking the coastlands. Um, extreme things any way you look at it but i i want to honor the seventh seal as being a slightly different judgment than the first four trumpets rather than clumping them all together and so that's why i've got these in two separate columns a lot of people would put them together i understand um but i'm trying to you know stay true to the timeline stay true to the scriptures now to honor also the fifth seal um with venus i apologize that i'm going to back up just a little bit to catch something that i missed 
All right, so uh, Revelation 6, verse 9, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. All right, so we're under the altar. We do have an altar in the skies. Let's highlight Venus, and I'm going to take it back to today. So we're going to come back to May in just a second. Venus, let's see. I'm going to look for Ara, the altar. And I think that that's, there we go. Let's make this bigger. So the saints under the altar, and this is the altar here. The sun is going to go into conjunction with Venus because Venus is going ret retrograde. So it's backing up a little bit. Perfect, perfect alignment right there. Just, you know, kind of outside the wings of Aquila and heading into that martyr judgment. Coming back to May 2000. And 22. So coming back to the seal judgments, transitioning into the trumpet judgments, I've got to be honest, I didn't really see anything that caught my eye. Um, I just followed the pattern that the next, you know, event would happen in about a month's time. So I put June for the trumpets um so the sun was entering into taurus um but i did have aquila as an ending point uh just because the great eagle that announces the woes was present um at the end of these judgments or the first four trumpet judgments there is in verse 11 reference to the star called wormwood uh i believe that we know that star as apophis when i did some research nothing presented itself to me um i will probably do more research and then want to change this video or something i don't know but um all that to say that you know when i i don't know i'll, I'll let people know that and ask for help so if anybody has any ideas on anything in this video Please do share. All right, so let me jump back over here to the Stellarium and we are going to see the sun. We'll follow it. Um, we'll follow, it's one second. Yeah, we're gonna follow it to the fifth, fifth and sixth trumpets. So following the sun, make this a little bigger but i really want to have that timeline up there with me so looking at the uh, first through fourth trumpets to be uh, in effect up until december just went over crater the cup of god's wrath went through virgo and the scales libra and then back to aura again All right, so the significance here is we're going to enter into, one minute, we're going to enter into the fifth trumpet, and that can be a little tricky because there's a couple of things going on at the same time. So just following the sun, we're looking for Capricorn. And this is going to go to Amos 8 with the sun going down at noontime along with Revelation 9. And again, this is a certain kind of darkness. This is a spiritual darkness. Uh, and I will go ahead and open that up. Because it's different from the darkness that we talked about with the sixth seal. This is going to use the same language that uh, Matthew 24 used. And actually, even with the fourth, I'll go back to chapter eight, with the fourth trumpet, it's going to use that same darkness. The third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon. Now, and then we go the 
third part of them was darkened. It's uh, noteworthy, you know, when you think about the third part of the angels were cast down in Revelation 12. Uh, last night, Stephen Benoon on Israeli News Live made a connection here that with all of the destruction from the trumpets, especially with the green grass and the trees, those are oxygen producing organisms. Well, the aliens that are, or the demonic presence that is supposed to come upon the earth, I believe with the fourth trumpet, they don't like oxygen. That's the breath of God. That's what gives us life and it's harmful to them. So the fact that the trees and the grass will be devastated, uh, that's very telling and will give entryway into these beings, make it earth more hospitable for them. But when it's in chapter, uh, verse 12, when it talks about, you know, all of this darkness, that sounds like a planetary eclipse. I don't know what else would darken the sun. And this is a spiritual darkness, not just a physical. It's both. Okay. And then we've got the woes introduced. So heading over to chapter nine with the fifth trumpet. And this one was one of the ones that I studied very early on because it is such a scary judgment, such a scary judgment. This is about the, well, I'll just read it. And the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. So obviously this is going to be a difficult judgment here, um, but it's only for five months. We see that later in verse five. So let's take a look and see what this looks like in this, uh, the heavens. I'm going to go ahead and put this in full mode. Okay. And we are entering into Capricorn. The significance with Capricorn. Okay. Right here. This is the key to the abyss. K2 key to abyss. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to follow that just yet. Looking at Capricorn, Amos 8 talks about a basket of fruit. Let's get that pulled up. And the basket of fruit is uh, associated with Capricorn because Capricorn uh, is where we get the word cornucopia, which means a basket of fruit. In this case, the prophet is saying summer fruit. And I've kind of prayed over that as, you know, to know is summer fruit. Well, I guess that, that might be, you know, different in Israel than what we might think of it because their seasons are different there. Uh, let's see. I believe that it is going to be down here in verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Now the word darken here is different from what we see in Matthew 24, Revelation 6, and Revelation 12. So I didn't get as much of a reading with this particular reference. I had to look at the verse as a whole. And again, we're looking at this from the January through June timeline. We're going to follow the sun and then we're going to come back and see K2, K2, C2017 K2. And we're going to see how this ties into the abyss and how the sun is going to take us to the Euphrates asteroid, which is going to tie us into the sixth trumpet. 
So moving on, in fact, oh, yeah, there's 96P Macholes. We saw that with the Revelation 12 sign. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go into full mode, and we're going to follow the sun till we get to July 2023, and then we're going to take a look at where this Euphrates asteroid is because the Euphrates needs to dry up for the next judgment, the 200 million entity army to march toward Jerusalem. All right. So following the sun, Macholes, uh 96P Macholes, that comet may be acting as a rapture comet, just as we're looking at Soho, uh, just like, you know, Jesus says in Matthew 24 that the sun will be darkened and the moon, that's the key, the moon's going to be red with, actually, excuse me, that was the sixth seal. With the sixth seal, the sun is dark as sackcloth. It's black. It's not gray, it is black. And the moon is red. With the fifth trumpet, both the moon and the sun are darkened, one from the ash of the abyss, uh, and I guess really, and, and maybe the, uh, the planet as well. So, I'm gonna watch the sun until July. And we'll see where, and again over here is K2, Key to Abyss over here, and it is with, oh, look at that. I can do it at the same time. It's over here in Eridanus, which is the Abyss constellation, and which actually starts, let's back it up so you can see it all together. Hydrus used to be the same constellation, all in part of the Abyss. So as we see the sun entering Capricorn, Cornucopia, K2 is entering the abyss, okay? So this is the start of the fifth trumpet, not only from what we see with the sun and constellation Capricorn, but this comet, K2 abyss, entering the abyss. And oh, look at there's the phoenix. Okay, and over here, there's Lyra, the harp, the musical instrument. So keep your eye on the sun, but also over here with K2 pan stars because here we've got Fornix and that is the furnace constellation. So entering the abyss to open the furnace. All right. So that's five months. So that's going to take us to the end of June. And let me go ahead. I'm going to back it up because it looks like it did not select um, or highlight, I should say, K2 pan star. So we'll watch that as it continues through the abyss constellation. And look, it exits at five months. All right, let's see that again. We entered Capricorn. beginning or right, beginning of February and we entered the abyss constellation end of January beginning of February and so five months we're gonna head out right to the end of June and boom heading right into the end of June so at this point now that the fifth trumpet is complete we're going to look for the sixth trumpet euphrates asteroid hello it's right there i mean we can't plan this any better and going back to the timeline i was a little concerned because this judgment is over a year and I thought, surely I'm missing something here. However, when we, this was mentioned on Paul Begley's show with Mike from around the world the other night. And when it talks about the sixth trumpet, we see right here 
and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And I hadn't really considered that that would be an actual time marker. I just looked at it as though it were saying, it's just for, you know, this appointed time. What, what it's saying, according to, you know, Pastor Paul Begley is this judgment is going to be for a, a year and a month. And that's what we have here. Okay, but let's, let's look. Let's look at what uh, the scriptures say. Because, you know, we're not trying to get excited about things. We're trying to put everything into perspective. Okay, looking at verse 12, one woe is past. Okay, so we know that that is the fifth trumpet. Okay. And I should say, we know that, you know, with the sixth trumpet at the end of the sixth trumpet, the two witnesses go into heaven. I hold the view that when we are raptured with the first rapture, that the two witnesses come down. And, you know, there's a lot of people getting that same sort of vision. So, again, this is a lot. This is a lot. Um, another thing with the fifth trumpet, um, as we see from Revelation 14, this is the harvest chapter. Oh, there it is. We have three rapture calls. Oh, that's interesting. Verse three, yeah, we have reference to the four beasts, the four living creatures, uh, the songs. The songs are going to be so important. Uh, reference to the 144,000. That's how we're going to defeat the enemy. And these songs, they're not going to be easy to sing, especially if we look at Revelation chapter five, when it, you know, the, the singers are saying, you are worthy to open the seals. You know, in Daniel 12, we saw that God told Daniel to seal the things up that he had seen. In Revelation 5, we see the lamb that was slain. He's the only one worthy to open those seals up. So we've got a continuation of the book of Daniel, just like the continuation with the 70th week. I mean, everything. Uh, and, and it all revolves around Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. Okay, jumping down, we have the first rapture cry with the angel um, and verse six, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, the good news to preach unto people, them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. He's got the good news. Those who listen to that gospel, they're going to be raptured. They have a sincere relationship with the Lord, not through a pastor or a video or biblical teacher. They are doing what Daniel did when he realized his people were about to be raptured out of exile, if you will. He grieved, he mourned, he didn't eat any special food. He just prayed to God and God heard him. And to the extent that he sent the angel Gabriel to speak with him. I mean, it was a massively big deal. And we see the prayers are just, they seem to be changing things in the heavens. They seem to be lessening these judgments. But, you know, after that rapture with the saints who are doing the praying, it's going to depend on the people. And I think that they're going to pull through. I think that they're going to pull through. I think that a lot of the dreams and visions that people are getting are worst case scenarios. Maybe not every time. But it's going to be hard. It's going to be a shock. There's going to be bad things. But I think that people are going to come together. But we got to pray for them now. Okay. So, uh, verse 7, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory. For the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of the water. Okay. Here's your rapture cry. The hour is come. Get out of here. Verse 8, and there, next rapture cry, there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, 
So we are looking for this to happen. Babylon has fallen, has fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Okay. Some people are saying that that is New York City and, and that could be an application. I'm thinking that it is Rome because it's where, you know, all the martyrs were killed. And that's what John would have understood as he wrote this book. But, you know, I'm a part of the community. I'm trying to, you know, collaborate just to present what my findings are. People are saying that New York is going to be destroyed probably around the time of the first rapture or the sixth seal. Uh, Babylon or, you know, whatever city it represents falling will be near the fifth trumpet is what I'm reading here because that's the next rapture uh, with, you know, what Matthew 24 refers to as the darkness um, with the, the sun and the moon being darkened. Continuing on, the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. Okay, so we've got the cup of God's wrath right over here. Crater. Right before the final battle with every hateful and unclean bird, with Corvus the crow, we've got a rapture cry. So what are we looking for? We're actually looking for a roar of a lion that is let out when the two witnesses go into heaven. Uh, for now, I'm gonna finish this chapter 14 out by pointing out that this is indeed a rapture chapter as we see in verse 15 another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time has come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe okay now let's talk about this lion here Leo, this is going to be with Revelation. Revelation is in order. It's not a novel, however. It talks about individual characters. So with Revelation, let me see. It's going to be Revelation 10. Oh, I put in Leo instead of Lion. One moment. Okay. It is Revelation 10, and just to put this in context, and I saw verse 1, another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his foot upon the sea, and his left or his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. Okay, we're kind of demonstrating dominance over both the sea and the earth. This is Revelation 10. We were just in Revelation 9 with the sixth trumpet. Just to, to help you frame this. Okay. Revelation 10 verse 3, and he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. Okay, this is after the sixth trumpet. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered. So moving from the sixth trumpet to the, the beginning of the sixth trumpet to the end of the sixth trumpet, we're looking for a year and a month later, the sun to be in Leo. And before we look at that, I just want to briefly look at chapter 11. This talks about 
our first set of characters, the two witnesses. Again, it's not a novel. We just talk about, just like we do with our simulations. We talk about the characters, and then we go through the simulation. So chapter 11 is the two witnesses. Chapter 12 is the woman. Chapter 13 is the Antichrist. Okay, so we see that when the two witnesses are taken up into heaven, that it is the end of the second woe. And there's, you know, there's going to be another earthquake. Okay, and the second woe we know as the sixth trumpet. Okay, it takes a moment to dissect all these things, but that's how they play out. Now we'll head over to Stellarium and we are currently at the end of the fifth trumpet. We're looking at Euphrates, the asteroid in July, June or July, going into conjunction with the sun. We can take a closer look. And end of June, beginning of July. And so we're going to go for a year and a month. So 2024, July. Okay. I don't know if you guys are getting excited, but I am. And I get to have a drink of water. That comment, let me see. Was it number 13? Hartley? 13 is an interesting number. It actually means Christian uh, prophet. I just looked that up because of another comment. Okay, so we've got towards the beginning of August, so a year and a day, or excuse me, a year and a month and a day. Let's see where we were before. In conjunction with the sun. So early July. So I, I call that a win. So two weeks, within a couple of weeks. All right. I find that exciting. Okay, so we hit our goal there. Next, the sun over crater. Let's take a look at Revelation 11 and 15. All right, so continuing on, we see from verse 14 of chapter 11, that that second woe is past, and the third woe, the seventh trumpet, cometh quickly. It doesn't even tell us when it starts. That's how quick it is. So I put it for September within a couple weeks. And again, I mean, just looking through these passages, I'm thinking of things that I may have missed in terms of signs in the heavens with the altar. Um, with other things, the the harps, I was thinking, oh, that's Lyra. And I may find some things, I'm sure I will. Um, but I think this is still going to be a really good comprehensive. So we're going to jump over to Revelation 15. I told you it'd take about a couple hours for me to get through everything that I would like to get through with this. Um, and this is seven years. I mean, seven years. All right, so Revelation 15. So for the most part, I love this chapter. I love this chapter. It talks about, you know, the song of the Lamb, the song of Moses. It's just a really uplifting chapter about God's love and his redemption and forgiveness. Uh, but as you may have seen, I have highlighted wrath. So we're looking at the cup of God's wrath. We're looking for crater. And we see here at the end of the chapter, verse 7, And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials, full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And now that I'm reading it, I'm like, hmm, I, wish, I wonder which beast it is. I wonder if we can figure that out. But anyway, to the point, so it's not three hours, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the sun and crater. This is going to happen very soon, according to our timeline. 
Okay, so we are in August, the sun over crater. Yep, I can see that happening. That's going to be the onset of the seventh trumpet, which will bring on the bulls. And then we're going to look for the sun over every cruel and hateful bird that is called to Armageddon that we see in Revelation 16. Let's see how this plays out. All right, so the sun is over crater September 2024 and then October 2024 the bold judgments and Armageddon September and October 2024 and then as we talked about in our previous video the Revelation 12 sign was September 23rd I'm gonna get emotional 2017 okay so we see the sun is at the woman's feet right now this is let me get my timeline out this is the full seven years plus 45 days as daniel talks about the 1335 days and revelation talks about the 1260 days that is seven years <clears throat> plus the extra 45 days so pretty astounding if you ask me in fact we have the sun and the moon at the woman's feet look at that look at that So again, seven years ago, where we started, plus a month and a few days, the sun is at her shoulders, the moon is at her feet, and then seven years into it, plus uh, you know, a month and a little bit, we've got both the sun and the moon at the woman's feet. Why? Because God loves the bride and so friends i hope that you have enjoyed this video let's go ahead and do as is our custom and close with some scripture and just see what god has to say about all these things all right so taken to nahum all right god is serious Nineveh's judge, chapter one, verse one, an oracle concerning Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the al -Kashite. The Lord is a jealous and avenging God. The Lord takes vengeance and is filled with wrath. The Lord takes vengeance on his foes and maintains his wrath against his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. His way is in the whirlwind and the storm and clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and dries it up. He makes all the rivers run dry. Verse 7, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Verse 15, look, there on the mountains, the feet of one who brings good news, who proclaims peace. Celebrate your festivals, O Judah, and fulfill your vows. No more will the wicked invade you. They will be completely destroyed. And the Lord add a blessing to the hearing of his word. God, thank you so much that you are faithful throughout all generations. And we can seek you and trust you that you fulfill your promises. Let us not be counted among the guilty. Give us faith, Lord Jesus. Help us with any unbelief and direct our paths, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Amen. And thank you so much. If you've lasted this long, God bless you. Um, please leave your thoughts below. I would love to hear from you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.